So in the previous tutorial, we created a workflow that triggers each time someone makes a comment on a commit in GitHub, and then we send that to Slack. Now let's add some conditional logic that will only send a message when that message is coming from um, a handful of usernames. So to do that, we'll add a if node, which is one of our conditional nodes. We'll click on it here. And the first thing I'll do is I'll close this, and we want to check this condition before we post the message. So we'll break this connection, we'll place it in the middle here, and we'll connect our GitHub trigger. How the if node works is we set up a condition within it, which either evaluates to true or false, and then the trigger routes that data accordingly. So from our GitHub trigger, we receive some data, we evaluate a condition. If it goes to true, then we'll go to the Slack node and post that message. So let's go ahead and open up the if node. Um, how it works is we set up multiple conditions to evaluate, and then we select if all of those conditions need to be true, or if any of those conditions need to be true. So in this case, let's add a string condition, because what we want to be evaluating or comparing is a text string. And for the first value, um, here basically we're setting up this value, an operation if it equals the second value or, or one of these other operations. Equals is what we need here. But for the first one, we want to reference that username from the GitHub trigger. So again, we'll use expressions. We'll go into the nodes, into the GitHub trigger, drill down into its output data, into the comment, and we want to get the username, which happens to be here. So we'll click on that. Again, up top, we're seeing in the expression editor, we have the variable that's now getting rendered here as max to catch. Perfect. So if value one equals max to catch, this will now evaluate to true. Let's add another username, so another string condition. We again want to use the expression editor here. Now if you remember what that variable is, perhaps you're adding a lot of expressions, you can filter. So here, clicking that login again. And now if this equals, let's say, username 2. Now currently, we have the sort of combine here set to all, so all of these would have to evaluate to true, but we actually just want that one of these evaluates to true, which means that if any of these are true, this if node will, will evaluate to true and route to our true branch, to our Slack node. So now that this is set up, let's execute this node, give this a test. We see that we have one result, which makes sense because we only had one GitHub comment from our trigger. And here from this dropdown, we see that this evaluated to true, and then a false branch, nothing evaluated to false here. This is useful if perhaps you grabbed 10 JIRA tickets and you're comparing some property. Some might evaluate to true, some might evaluate to false. But in this case, that's working. So if we test the Slack node by clicking this play button here, we see that the workflow was executed. If we go into Slack, we see that we have the message here. Now, what I did by pressing this play button is the Slack node went to the previous node, saw that it has data and used that. Instead of, if we hit the execute workflow button, it would restart the whole workflow and we'd have to create another trigger event. So it's useful to use this play button or the execute, execute node button when you're testing so you don't have to keep creating a new trigger event. So this workflow is working now. Um, what we can do to improve readability of it is rename our if node so we remember what we're comparing here. In this case, we're filtering usernames. We'll save that. And what else we can do with the conditional node here is use a no operation node. Now, while this node does not do anything, it's helpful to have it in your flow because as you can see here, the Slack node had some data sent to it. And if we did have multiple items coming in, we could see that some were flowing to the Slack node and some were flowing to this no operation node here. Um, the last thing to do here is to save our workflow and then activate it. Activate and save. And now this will run in the background and 
the workflow would execute each time we're getting a comment here on GitHub. Let's give that a quick try. It's running in the background now. This is the last comment. Comment that. Let's take a look in Slack here. We see that it just came in. This is the last comment posted by Max to Catch. Um, this is the last tutorial in this Get Started series. We will be creating more, but from here, there's some links in the description. We have a Medium blog where we have various examples and also our documentation, which are great places to check out what to go and do from here. But what you've learned here are the essentials for building a workflow. From here, it really is about adding more nodes to build more comprehensive workflows and then understanding the complexities of each node for example, in the Slack node, there's various sections we haven't tackled yet that can add things like tables, buttons, and other sorts of blocks or attachments. Thanks.